Hey guys, and welcome to Should You Buy It, where all we do is talk a little bit about the game and tell you whether or not we think it's worth the cost. In this episode, we'll be playing Divine Heavenly Acres, a 2D farming life sim and crafting game where your goal is to develop a flourishing farm as well as become the best there ever was in this monster battling turn-based combat game. The first question that we always cover in these videos is what stage of development is the game in? And in this case, Divine Heavenly Acres is currently in full release and available on PC for $15. Now before we jump into the video, there are a few things that we need to cover. First off, we want to thank the developers for paying to sponsor this review and providing us with access to the beta before release. Just so you know, because this is the beta version, there will be some things in the full release version of the game that we weren't able to experience. And since I know some of you will ask, no, this review will not be influenced by the sponsorship in any way. So what exactly is the game? Well, Heavenly Acres takes a heavy inspiration from other similar games such as Stardew Valley and Pokemon-like titles. First, let's talk a little bit more about the Stardew Valley elements as they will feed directly into the monster battling elements that the game offers. You'll start the game by selecting your character. Each character option has a different backstory that is on the dark or light side as well as different starting stats. Those starting stats, however, can be modified a bit to give you a small amount of extra customization. Your character stats include four different categories. Some examples of these are Strength, which will increase your damage dealt to objects while gathering, or Charisma, which will increase your ability to make friends throughout the world. These stats can then be increased further through special jewelry items like necklaces, rings, and belts. Part of the reason these skills are so important is because it ties into your farming and exploration. One of the ways these skills tie into your farming is through the fact that it allows you to have a chance to critically strike when gathering. Critically striking when gathering will not only cause extra damage to the object you're gathering, but will also not consume any of your energy. Energy works very similar to Stardew Valley in the sense that you have a limited amount of it per day. While you can get some of that energy back each and every day by simply eating and using wells, you will eventually have to go to sleep in order to fully refresh it. Sleeping, however, not only benefits you, but also restores the health of your monsters. Now, monsters in this game essentially act much like Pokemon. They are creatures which are primarily found around the world, but especially in dungeons and caves. Caves are where you will go to farm out resources, as well as where you will go to fight and level up monsters. In order to explore the cave, however, you will need to spend energy so that you can mine through the walls of the cave and reveal more monsters and resources within them. Monster fights are rather interesting as they revolve around a double style of combat rather than a single style of combat. This adds a lot of depth to the fighting as different elemental effects will dramatically impact how well two monsters can work together. For an example, if two monsters both cause a bleed effect by attacking, then that bleed effect will stack causing more damage than if just one of those monsters decided to do so. If you're able to cause a debuff to get to 50 stacks before the opponent's next turn, then it will cause some sort of bonus effect, such as a burst of healing with the nature element. Monsters will of course also gain stats whenever you level them up, but that's not the only way that they will gain stats. You see, whenever you use an ability in combat, that monster will have to expend some of their energy. In order to restore that energy, the only thing that you can do is feed your monsters. Each time you feed your monsters, it will not only restore the energy, but also will give them a permanent stat increase based on the type of food that you feed them. For an example, if you feed your monsters bacon, it will permanently increase their HP, whereas if you give them corn, it might increase their agility and intelligence. These monsters are absolutely critical to progression as well, since without them, you won't be able to clear dungeons. Dungeons essentially act as gyms would in any other monster battling game. Each dungeon has a theme such as thunder and water monsters, and each dungeon also has a boss within it. After clearing a dungeon, it will collapse and then become a cave, which can then be explored to continue hunting down the same type of monsters that you have already defeated within it. In order to get any of these monsters though, you'll have to craft them at your monster masher. And yes, one could say it's made from a graveyard smash. That's because to craft these monsters, you will have to kill off other monsters of the same type and have seen one of the monsters that you want to make. This means if you want to get your hands on an ice monster, you're going to need to take out several other ice monsters so that you can get drops from them. Then all you need to do is simply take the items back to said monster masher and craft your monster. 
Now, earlier in this video, we mentioned that some features would be coming to the game that we weren't able to experience during the beta. These include, of course, some major, major bug fixes, as well as a whole marriage system and the ability to change your keyboard layout to make it feel a little bit more comfortable for some players. So now let's jump over to the pros and cons section for the video. First up for the pros is that the idea of making a Stardew Valley-like game with a huge focus being on the monsters is interesting and unique. One of our biggest issues with Stardew Valley was that the combat felt extremely bland, but this time around, combat feels interesting and impactful to the game, especially since the farming of food for your monsters ties directly into how powerful they are. Next up for the pros is that it seems like there's quite a bit of content in the game for the price of the title. Considering there's about 200 different monsters, 9 dungeons, and 10 monster types on the combat side of things alone, there's easily enough content to warrant the price tag. This of course doesn't even count the marriage, story, and farming elements of the game. And finally for the pros is that the many subsystems in the game add an increased level of depth. This being everything from the events where you might have to hunt down some easter eggs for a competition, to the fact that the more that you trade with the city, the more powerful that city will become. All of these add an additional layer of content to the game that is by no means needed, but is more than welcomed. Now for the cons. The first con we have for you today is that the game just feels a little bit jank with its UI. It almost feels like it's kind of optimized for a controller in a way, even though it's really a PC game. To give you one example of what I'm talking about, there's one time I actually deleted my save file unintentionally because the UI didn't give me a are you sure question or anything of the sort. Following that are the bugs that we experienced during our time with the game. One of those was just the fact that the game crashed multiple times for multiple different reasons throughout our playthrough. We also had situations where we'd get stuck with this weird bug error that would show up saying images are not being loaded and would just keep popping up no matter what I did until I restarted the entire game. And the last con I have for you today is just the fact that there is no XP share item, at least at the moment, so grinding levels for a new monster, it means you're going to have to go back and do previous areas you've already completed. This is because you can only craft new monsters, and new crafted monsters always start out at level 1, unlike other monster battling games where you catch them at a higher level based on where they were caught at. So now it's time for the rating for the game, and when we rate games, we want to get one hour of enjoyment out of every one dollar that the game costs. So for this game in particular, in Divine Heavenly Acres, we would want to get roughly 15 hours of enjoyment out of the $15 cost of the game. And after putting several played hours into this game, we give it... 6 out of 10 potatoes. Heavenly Acres was a really enjoyable experience, however, since we were only able to play the beta before the official release of the game, there were several bugs that we ran into, as well as mechanics we were unable to experience. The developer has confirmed that the majority of the bugs that we personally encountered will be fixed for the launch version of the game, and all the other elements, such as the marriage system, will be included as well. With that being said, we personally did encounter quite a lot of bugs during the beta version of the game, and the game definitely definitely has some issues, such as a rather finicky UI, but at the end of the day, it didn't retract too much from our experience. Just don't be like me and accidentally delete your save file by clicking the delete button. With all of that being said, we really enjoyed how the game blended the farming and combat together to create a really unique and innovative experience, and therefore feel that Divine Heavenly Acres is probably worth the cost. Before you guys go, thank you so much for watching, and if you did enjoy the video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe for more survival game content. I just want to shout out Jonathan S. and Jim Phillips, thank you guys so much for being members, we couldn't do this without you, and also a shout out to all of our new subscribers here on screen. Now don't forget to check out all of our links in the description below for things like our music library and Epic Games Creator Code, as these are just ways for you to help support the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching again, and we'll see you next time.